Hello bookish people, it's Sharifa, contributing editor at Book Riot, back again to talk to you about the Read Harder Challenge. This time I'm talking about the first book in a series by a person of color. And of course I won't be able to cover them all here, but I hope this gives you a good starting point and I hope you'll explore the myriad other series by people of color out there in the world. The Book of Phoenix is a speculative fiction novel written by Nigerian-American author Nnedi Okorafor, who also wrote Akata Witch and Zara the Windseeker. Those are both young adult novels. This is an adult novel. Technically, her novel, Who Fears Death, is the first book she wrote in the series. This is the prequel to that book, so I'm calling it the first book in the series. I hope you don't mind. Okorafor deals with some pretty serious themes. Who Fears Death tells the story of Anya Sunwu, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, the child of a dark-skinned woman raped by a light-skinned sorcerer and oppressor in a post-apocalyptic Sudan. The Book of Phoenix is about another young woman, this one, Phoenix. Now, Phoenix isn't necessarily a young woman. She's a bookish two-year-old with the mind and body of a 40-year-old woman. Phoenix is a highly intelligent woman who lives a comfortable yet suspect life in Tower 7 in New York. In Tower 7, people like Phoenix are genetically manipulated and cloned. Phoenix's life turns on its head when she falls in love with a fellow specimen and realizes that she's been living in a veritable prison all her life. When her lover Saeed dies, the spark of rebellion is literally ignited in her and she decides to rebel against the big eye, which is basically the scientists and the staff in the towers who oversee the specimen. Still an innocent, she's thrust into the big bad world and she suffers a lot from it. She suffers a lot because her true love is gone and she suffers because she doesn't understand what this world is. And she travels from America to Ghana and then back to America again, trying to exist in the world, trying to maintain her freedom and discovering truths about her background and who she is and about the specimen. It's a mythical, powerful, and painful read, and that's The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor. Next up, I have Historical Fiction with the 20th Wife by Indu Suntaresan, and this is the first book in the Taj Mahal trilogy, this one telling the story of an empress of the Mughal Empire and the scandalous and seductive love affair between Maranisa and Prince Salim. So like I said, the story takes place in the Mughal Empire. It's the 17th century. Maranisa has to navigate relationships with the many men in her life, from her father to her husband and the emperor, using her wits and her wherewithal to gain power and become Empress Nur Jahan. So often we hear about emperors. How often do we hear about empresses? Be ready to get lost in a deep dive into the notable people, cultural tidbits, and historical events of the Mughal Empire and for romance dressed in all its complexities with The 20th Wife by Indu Sundarasan. My final book is The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin, book one of the Dream Blood series. If you've been hanging out with a book riot crowd for a while now, you've probably heard Jemison's name before. I had the pleasure of hearing her speak on a panel at Book Riot Live last year and she's awesome. Everyone talks about Jemison's world building skills and you'll certainly encounter them in this story about a hero, one of the gatherers who keeps the peace in his city by manipulating the sleeping mind and nipping the corrupt in the bud. As things go in a land of serenity, disruption rears its ugly head, corrupting the dreams of the people a hero is tasked with protecting. Then we have feisty ambassador Sunandi who's trying to puzzle together the curious death of her mentor. So we've got this crazy sort of Freddy Krueger type thing happening with people's dreams and their sleeping minds and a hero has to go out and try and protect them and try to figure out what's happening to them and then he also has to protect Tsunandi who is one of those corrupt minds he's supposed to be giving the long sleep. I love it when two characters who are opposed are forced together. We get to learn more about the gatherers and their beliefs and the beliefs of this city where people are basically given permission to kill people in their sleep. 
and we get to see Sunandi viewing it from the other angle of thinking that these people are murderers. It's all very interesting to watch play out, especially when it happens in a world that is completely fantastical, completely made up, but still so rich you believe it's there. That's it from me and this Read Harder Challenge, but I'll see you again for another next time. Bye!